I'm Shelly Turner with the Builder All team and I am super excited to be showing you how to use the new Builder All webinar feature in your dashboard. So as you can see I'm logged into my dashboard and I'm going to go all the way down here to where it says webinar and I'm going to click on that. Now here's where we can create our webinars. I've already got one created and as you can see it's got several different buttons that you can use. The first button is to delete the webinar. The second button is to edit. The third button is to get the codes for the webinar. And the fourth button is to administer the webinar. We're going to go ahead and create a webinar from scratch. So I'm going to click the plus button. And the first thing it asks you for is the name. Once I fill out the name and the description, I can choose to, to protect it with a password. If I check mark that, I have to put the password in there. Uh, and the users that attend the webinar will have to put in that password. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it because I don't want a password for mine. And once I fill out all that information, I can just click Create Webinar. And now I have the webinar in edit mode. And the General tab is where I've already filled out my information about the name, description, and if I wanted to go ahead and choose to protect it with a password, I could at this point. The next thing I'm going to look at is contents. For contents, we can choose where our webinar comes from. So I'm going to click the down button and we can choose it to be a YouTube video, a recorded video, an iframe, or a live builder all. The live builder all is not ready yet, so only the first three are available. I'm going to go ahead and choose a YouTube video and then I'm going to put a YouTube video link in there. I've got my YouTube video link in there and now I'm just going to click save webinar and go ahead and make sure that that information is saved. I'm going to click OK and then this is the test webinar we're working with so I'm going to click the edit button to go back in and edit it some more. So I've got my contents which was a YouTube video. Now I'm going to work on scheduling and when I schedule I can choose how long this is going to last. I'm going to say this is going to last 30 minutes and remember that the duration is in minutes. Then I can choose the schedule to start by a start button that I press to start the video or I can start by a specific time or I can start on demand. I'm going to do this one as start by button so I'm going to click that and there's my start button right there and I'm going to click save again to make sure everything is saved and then click OK. Now I'm going to go back to the webinar and edit again and so I have the contents here, I have the schedule here now I'm going to do chat. I can enable chat to go underneath this webinar. I can also choose to save the history if I want to. I can clear the history that's already there. I can download the history and I can make ghost users. We'll do that in a second. I can also choose the chat height which this one is 15 percent. I'm going to go ahead and make it 30 percent. And then I'm going to go ahead and edit the ghost user. So I'm going to click the edit button. Ghost users are users that appear in the chat and they're not real people. It's just the computer putting them in there. So I'm going to create a few ghost users so you can see how they work. I've added several ghost users. As you can see I've got them coming in at different time intervals, different names, and different messages. And I've got the ability to delete these or even edit these. So if I want to change something on a ghost user I just click the edit button and I can edit that information and then click save. Once I'm done adding my ghost users I just click save. And now I have my ghost users in there, I have my chat height in there, I have enable chat, I don't want to save the history so I'm going to click save again and then OK. And one more time I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to make sure everything is saved properly so I'm going to go into general take a look, contents take a look, schedule take a look, chat take a look, and then statistics are available once you're done with your webinar. You can put some numbers in to figure out uh, how many people uh, make it to the end, how many people are left before the end, just some general information, and then you can also enter some financial information so you can figure out how much it really costs to put that webinar on. So that's uh, the general and financial information in statistics. And then you can actually connect to Mailing Boss. And the first thing you need to do is add your API keys, which are available in Mailing Boss. 
And then once you do that, you can click Add a New Schedule Rule. So when you click that button, it brings up the list that you want from your mailing boss and the message that you want to send either before the webinar starts or after the webinar has started. And then you can choose that email going out weeks, days, hour, or even minutes before you start or after you start. You can put in a subject, put in the message, and then put in the send from email. And once you get all of that set up, you just click save and that will have emails set up in your webinar. Once you have everything filled out correctly, then you click Save Webinar. So this one is actually ready to go into a web page. So let's go ahead and jump in and add it to a web page. And remember, when we add it, we're going to use the code right here. So I'm going to click the code. And instead of bouncing back and forth, I'm just going to open a notepad. And I'm going to add this to the notepad. So the ID is 66. And the secret, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into my notepad. Now I won't have to bounce back into this window to be able to get that information. So I'm going to minimize it out of the way. I'm going to close this window. And now we're going to go into a basic blank web page. We're going to add our webinar to it so that you can see how easy it is to add to a web page. So here I am in a blank page. And to add the webinar in, I'm going to go to plus. I'm going to go all the way down to apps and then I'm going to choose the webinar app and I'm just going to click on top of it. And that drops the window right into my page and I'm just going to go ahead and stretch it out a bit, make it a little bit bigger so it can take up the whole page, center it, make sure it's centered and I may make it a little bit longer. There we go. And then I'm going to double click on it and that brings up the ID and the secret that I need. So I'm going to go back to my trusty notepad and the ID is 66. So I'll type that in there and then I'll paste the secret in there and I'll click confirm. And now it's set up. All I have to do is hit save and save again. And remember we set this one up to start by the start button. So what I'm going to do is go to the public version of this page and we're going to take a look at what it looks like. So here's the public version of this web page, and I'm going to go ahead and put my nickname in and click OK. And it says right now that the webinar has not yet started. That's because I haven't pushed the start button yet. So I'm going to put these windows side by side so you can actually see what happens when I click the start button. So I'm going to pull this tab out and I'm going to move it over to the right hand side. And then I'm going to put this one over to the left hand side. And we'll go back into our office area. And this is that test webinar. Remember, this is still saying that the webinar has not started yet. I kind of scooch this over a bit to get a little bit bigger screen. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this webinar by clicking the Edit button. And I'm going to go to Schedule. And remember, we said that it was going to start by button. There's the button that we used to start it. So I'm going to click Start. And you'll see on the left hand side that that is actually started for us. We didn't have to do anything except click that start button and it started for us. I also want you to notice that we've got comments already coming in. There's John from Colorado. His comment is in there. There's Lisa. She says hello from Missouri. And there's some more that will be coming in as we watch this webinar. Those are our ghost users. Ghost users are a really good way to make your webinar look really active and look like a lot of people are attending. Once the webinar is all the way finished, if I want to restart the webinar later after this has ended and you're sending another group of people at a certain time, it will appear like this to them when they come brand new to the page or they refresh the page. And we can just click start and it will start the whole webinar over again just like as if it was brand new and it'll take those same ghost users and add them into the webinar. So watch the ghost users. They're the same ones and they pop in just like the on the other webinar. So here's the webinar tool again. Here are all the settings again. Let's go through it one more time. So I'm going to click edit. And remember the general settings where you come up with the name and the description and you can protect it with the password. 
the webinar visitors will have to have the password to be able to see the webinar. You can also manipulate the contents. You can get your content from a YouTube video, recorded video, an iframe, and soon we'll have live builder all. You also can schedule your webinar and you can schedule your webinar for a specific duration. You can choose to schedule your webinar by a start button, by start time, or on demand when they go into the web page, it will automatically start the webinar. You can also choose chat. You can enable the chat or disable the chat. You can clear the chat history. You can download the history. You can enable ghost users by clicking edit and listing all of your ghost users. You can even edit them once you've added them if you want to change something. And you can manipulate the chat height percentage. I put mine at 30%. If you want it bigger, just put a higher number. After the webinar is over, you can look at some basic statistics. You can also connect Mailing Boss to the webinar to allow emails to be sent out before the webinar or after the webinar. So lots of awesome things you can do for your webinar inside of BuilderAll. Once everything is there, all you have to do is click Save and it is ready to add to your web page. Let's go ahead and review how to add that to your web page. To add the webinar, you just go to Plus and then to Apps and then to the webinar app and click it and that adds it to your page. Then you can resize it so that it fits exactly where you want it to fit. Once it's on there, you double click and that brings up the ID and the secret that you need. I've saved ours on our notepad, so I'll just copy that, put the ID as 66, and then the secret I'll paste in there, and then click Confirm. And now it's ready to go. All I have to do is click Save, and it's ready to go live on your web page and ready for webinar visitors. So that's how you use the new webinar platform available in BuilderAll.